You probably wish that you had gotten into data science five years ago, but you can't turn back the clock. But life has given you a second chance to become elite at an in-demand skill right at its genesis. We are perfectly positioned because who better is there to implement AI for businesses than data scientists? But to take advantage of this opportunity, you need a plan. And over the past few weeks, I've been refining mine. So in the hopes of helping you with your strategy, here's how I'm learning AI as a data scientist. But before getting into those, the terrain of AI is broad. You have AI for text like ChatGPT, AI for video like Runway, and for image generation like DALI. And honestly, the list goes on and on and on. You have to pick your poison. So I've made a decision. Instead of having a wide berth of shallow knowledge, I'm going all in on text, which means a primary focus on LLMs. This is the most surface level of the five focuses, so it makes a great starting point. There are a ton of customer-facing AI applications out there that help in so many different aspects of life. So my first priority is to become well-versed in the few that help to up my productivity in my day-to-day -day life. Besides just increasing my productivity, it also makes sure that I get used to the customer side of things, like knowing what's intuitive when working with LLMs so I can make the end user's experience better when I build my own apps, but more on that later. The two existing technologies I want to get really good at are firstly GitHub Copilot. This is an AI coding assistant, a coding buddy, that helps you when you are coding supposedly be 55% faster. I haven't used it yet, but Microsoft is pushing this pretty aggressively. And I think for my own due diligence, I should give myself exposure to it and see how I like it. I mean, I often use ChatGPT when debugging anyway, so Copilot should save me from having to copy and paste across solutions. So we'll see how that goes. And I just mentioned it there, but ChatGPT is actually the second technology I want to sharpen my blade in, specifically prompt engineering. I still don't really get the hype about prompt engineering and I still doubt it's going to become this lucrative career, long term at least, but nevertheless, I am going to be taking a quick prompt engineering course and see what the big deal is. Becoming a great prompter will also probably help me when I'm building pipelines for my own LLM apps, so I guess it could actually be useful. Okay, this is the fun focus. I want to become really great at implementing my own LLM apps. I've already been experimenting with some simple things like just calling the OpenAI API using Langchain, which is, it's cool and all, but I want to move beyond these fairly simple wrappers. I want to be able to create something with a decently complex architecture. And perhaps the most important part is that I don't want to be solely reliant on OpenAI. So that means I need to get used to using more open source LRMs and which ones are the best for different use cases. But I also need to increase my knowledge on different ways to handle vector embeddings. I'm aware of Pinecone, but I'm sure there's probably a lot more different ways to perform semantic queries on these vector embeddings. I always advise people getting into data science that the quickest way to learn is through implementation, well, it's time for me to practice what I preach because I will be taking you guys on that journey and vlogging my journey when I'm creating different apps and making them available for you to use and, uh, and roast. <laughs> so that should be fun. So because we aren't software engineers, we actually have to know the underlying theory rather than just how to code. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. What, so they can roast us, but we can't clap back? Fine, I'll stick to the product managers. Anyways, a lot more people are gonna be able to implement AI rather than understand the underlying architectures. My gut instinct says that understanding the underlying infrastructure will be one of the ways to differentiate yourself during your career. Being able to tweak a company's AI strategy based on your underlying knowledge has the potential to make a lot of companies money and thus you become more and more valuable in the job market. So I have some existing knowledge of these areas but I am going to be digging deeper into them to become truly confident that I understand everything that I need to about them. Okay, this one is specifically for the nerdy people out there, and that is becoming very knowledgeable about the wider lore of AI. So it's less about increasing employability skills and just being a genuine nerd instead. <laughs> so this includes things like knowing the history of AI and how it's been developed and what's led us to this point, the key breakthroughs in the industries and the power players. But looking forward is as important as looking back. So I want to know how experts, not just thread bros and Twitter, so what do those academic scholars and business people think the world will look like because of AI, but also with a more fantastical angle and how sci-fi writers envision an AI-driven future to look like because, man, those authors tend to be scarily accurate. So this one is the most 
most straightforward of them all. AI tech evolves scarily fast and I want to do a good job of keeping up with relevant news so that I'm well positioned to adjust to crucial developments. The most important part of this will be avoiding shiny object syndrome where the moment some random new development comes up, I'm dropping everything and pursuing that instead. It's about keeping up with relevant landscape altering news. I already know that you probably have your own AI learning plan, so put that in the comments below and we can share our ideas and see what approach would actually work best. I will be sharing some of my AI projects with you, but if you're wondering how you can make more effective portfolio projects for data science, click on this video on screen now.